Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Mount Olive on this beautiful day. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Uh, bulletin announcements are printed for your benefit. I think you should be able to figure everything out. Uh, if you have a question, ask after the service. And uh, we begin with our first hymn. Bridegroom, 
decks himself like a priest with beautiful headrest, and, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Of God, which surpasses all understanding, 
will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have received, revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. And again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest of them seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry and had sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out to the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to a friend, How did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing in teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. And was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will not have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and a solid church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we sing, Come my soul with every gift. <coughs>
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text that I have chosen for our consideration this morning is the Epistle lesson as it was read before. I'd like to read once again these words from Philippians chapter 4. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is our text. Dear friends in Christ, jumping back a verse or two, Paul starts out this chapter, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. What? Paul didn't live in 2020, obviously. Rejoice in the Lord always? Are you kidding me? Paul didn't live through a pandemic. He didn't have to self-isolate. He didn't have to wear a face mask when he went into Walmart, um, what the public market, wherever. He didn't have to sit six feet apart from other people when he went to church or when he was preaching. What does Paul know about the troubles of our day? He said, rejoice in the Lord always. Always! <clears throat> How can Paul say that? Seems ridiculous when you think about it. In some ways, I say maybe we're thinking too hard. Because he goes on to say, do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. If you've talked to very many people or looked at the internet lately or been on Facebook or Snapchat or Instagram or any of these things, you will, or read the news, read the newspaper? Watch TV? you see that a lot of people are anxious, worried, and concerned about this coronavirus thing. Many are also concerned about their income, because many have lost their jobs, or have been put on furlough, or whatever. And so they don't know how they're going to pay their rent, or their mortgage or pay for medications, and for some even to put food on the table. And Paul says, do not be anxious about anything? What does Paul know about the troubles of this world? What does Paul know about the troubles of this world? Read Acts sometime and you will find the troubles that Paul faced, including shipwrecks, beatings, persecutions, famine, sorrow. It, and at the time that he is writing these very words, when he wrote, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. You know where he was? He was in prison. He was in prison for speaking up and speaking out about Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. He was approaching the time that he realized that he would, it was very likely that he would be executed for his preaching and teaching. Yes, Paul did know about troubles and trials in this world. And still, he said, rejoice in the Lord always. 
Do not be anxious about anything. How can that be? How could Paul have that confidence? And how could he be telling the Philippian Christians in particular, and all Christians, including us, some almost 2,000 years later, not to be anxious? Knowing that we live in a world where terrible things are going on. Not just the pandemic and things like that, but wars, earthly catastrophes, fire, fires, wildfires, hurricanes. Another one just happened this week. Could you honestly go to some of the people who have suffered through that hurricane and say, oh, don't be anxious? Paul says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, get this, with thanksgiving, prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And so, if Paul were living today, he might say, God, he's got this. God knows what to do. God knows how to handle the issues that you face. God knows how to take you by the hand or hold you in the palm of his hand and bring you through bring you through to the end, bring him, you through to that, <coughs> that glorious banquet that Isaiah speaks about with rich food and what is well-refined wine? I'm guessing it's really good, whatever kind of wine it is. Extra filtered, I don't know, but well-refined, our text says. Paul knows and has confidence that God is able to do anything that is necessary to see to it that his own people are cared for, supported, and protected, even in the midst of great trial and trouble. Paul has experienced First hand what God can do. And he has seen the hand of God working in and through his life. Even, he said, even in jail, even in prison, I have had the opportunity to proclaim Christ to the guards and the prisoners. And so now the whole Praetorian Guard is coming to faith. He would never have had the opportunity to do that had he not been in prison. If he had walked up to the palace, up to uh, the Roman emperor and said, let me talk to your guards about Jesus. Nope. Would never have happened. But being in prison, God placed him there. God put him there so that the opportunity would be available for him to bring the good news to people who needed to hear. And Paul knew and wanted the Philippian Christians and all of us to know that the God or the peace of God that surpasses, goes far beyond all understanding <clears throat> goes beyond anything that you could possibly figure out. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will keep your, your heart and your mind in, in Christ Jesus. 
heart and mind. What does he mean by heart and mind? Let's start with mind, that's the easy one. What goes on up here? It, well, supposed to go on up here. This is your thinking. This is where the worry often starts. But Paul says that the God, that the peace of God will keep it and will take care of it and watch over it and provide the confidence that you need to hear and understand that God is in control and God will see you through. He will keep you safe in his hands and lift you up, Isaiah says, as on wings of eagles. Keep your mind clear, focused on the truth of God's kingdom and the promise and the blessing of things that are to come because the things of this world and the troubles of this world are just passing away. And the, the day will come when they will, when you will experience the wondrous glory of eternal life. And the problems, even the most serious problems, the things that you would have worried about the most, the things that caused you to have the highest level of anxiety, gone. Gone. Like a puff of smoke. Nothing. Nothing at all. will keep your mind, your thoughts, and your heart. Heart, your emotions, your feelings, your fears. Heart is the place that hates, and heart is the place that loves. And through all those emotions that we are experiencing, even in this time, especially in this time, the peace of God will be that steady rock that provide, makes it possible for your emotions to be stabilized. For your emotions, for your heart to be kept safe and secure, so you are not distracted by the wiles of the devil and go chasing after false teachings, false whatever. The peace of God keeps your heart in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Because Jesus is the one who made it who makes it all possible for us. If he had not come, if he had not been born, if he had not experienced life, <coughs> if he had not been tempted as we are, if he had not come through it, through it all, yet without sin, and if he had not gone to that cross, suffered, died, and was buried, if he had not been raised from the dead, if Jesus had not done any of that, or all of that, we would be lost. We would be lost and have every reason, every reason to be anxious and filled with sorrow. But because Jesus has come, because Jesus has done everything that is needed for your forgiveness and for you to have a right relationship with your God and Father, your Creator. Because of that, Paul is able to say to the Philippians and to us, Rejoice in the Lord always! And again, I say, Rejoice! Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Paul, in the last part of our scripture reading, 
goes on to explain the things that he has experienced, how he know, has come to learn how to be content if he has an abundance or if he has little. Little or few things, little food, whatever, the few possessions, that might actually be the easier way to keep your focus on God. But, I say that when we have an abundance, it's easy to stray and allow our minds to go off into other directions. Because we say, oh, I'm doing fine. What do I need God for? But Paul says, I have learned how to be content in both situations, in abundance and poverty. And then here are those words. Two, sex, two things to remember today and perhaps always, maybe work on memorizing both of these. Do not be anxious about anything, but in, with prayer and prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Remember that one. I know it's more than one verse. Remember that one. And then remember the last verse of our passage. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. People in our day and some preachers will say, pay attention to this. <coughs> some motivational speakers will even say, you need to learn how to say, I can do all things. If I just put my mind to it. I almost said a bad word. Malarkey, how about that? I can do all things on my own, with my own strength, with my own mind, with my own energy. No way. Too many people forget the last half of that verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No matter what adversity you face, no matter what trouble comes your way, because Jesus has done everything that you need to go to meet that challenge and come through it with flying colors, you can do it. Because God is with you. Jesus gives you the strength that you need. I can do all things. How about this? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let the focus be on Him and give to God the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now hear these words you just heard before. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. We rise for prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for everything that Jesus has done for us. We pray that you would continue to care for us and provide that peace that we need in every circumstance and in every time. We know for certain that you have in mind your people and that you will continue to watch over us day by day. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, O Lord, that you would be with us in our final hour. See us through those trying times 
and receive us unto yourself in eternal glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, that you would be with our South Dakota campus ministries, especially with our outreach here from Mount Olive with students and staff at Lake Area and Mount Marty. Help us to share the good news of Jesus with those who need to hear. Help us to <coughs> work together to bring the good news into the lives of people who are yours and who need to grow in faith day by day. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, Lord, that you would be with all who are suffering the impacts of COVID-19 COVID virus. We pray that you would um, comfort those who mourn, strengthen those who are ill, be with all of us as we uh, do the best that we can to um, combat and be safe in the, these times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We rejoice, O oh Lord, with uh, Dylan Collins and Lauren Burnt uh, as they were joined in holy marriage yesterday. We ask that you would continue to be with them, help them to grow in love and trust in you, and live together in the years and, uh, to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These things and whatever else you would have us ask, grant for the sake of your dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is give, given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated. of all your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body. The Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now may this true body and true blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
We will have some prayer. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this saving gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn, Savior again to thy dear name. Go then in peace and serve the Lord.